Aloha mai kako. Let there be aloha among us. I am Dr. Adam Jansen, and I have the honor of serving as state archivist and administrator of the public archives. For those of you who are not familiar with the Hawaii State Archives, our mission is to collect, arrange, describe, and make accessible the public archives of Hawaii. And we've taken that to mean that any record that protects your rights, identity, property, or history are eligible for preservation in our archives. While we primarily focus on governmental records, we also have over 500 personal manuscript collections from individuals or organizations that contributed in some way to the land of Hawaii. Our collection was really started in 1843 by R.C. Wiley, Minister of Foreign Affairs in the Hawaiian Kingdom. But our oldest records date to 1790, which really predates written Hawaiian language by over 30 years. Legislatively, the Public Archives of Hawaii was founded in 1905, and we have been in the same area since. Our collection has grown to over 14,000 boxes of manuscript and governmental records and over 500,000 photographs. So given this immense amount of information, the question becomes how does the average researcher find that record that they are looking for? And this includes record types such as this birth record from 1861 in Wailuku. As you can see, it's not a formal birth certificate like we're used to today. Back in this time period, the attending physician would just keep a running list in the journal of where they were, what day, and who was born at that time. Here is an example of a marriage license acquired by one John Dominus to a Lydia Paki, who would become the future queen of Hawaii. And this was given in 1862. Interesting note, this is a special license because foreigners were required to get permission to marry local vahine. Here's an example of a World War I service card from 1915. More genealogical information can be ascertained from land records, such as this Land Commission Award from 1862. And here is a passport record of a Daniel Bullman of Great Britain in 1850 something. Apparently they forgot to fill that out. But it's these types of resources that are very valuable when doing genealogical research because once you get past the standard marriage birth and death records you really have to start reaching further and deeper into collections to be able to find some of this information particularly in areas where the written language was a relatively newer phenomena and the processes of creating these types of standard records was not yet formalized so for us, the question now becomes, how do we connect the people of Hawaii with their documentary heritage and their history so that they could find their kupuna, their ancestors, their legacy, given that as the state of Hawaii, we're an archipelago, a chain of islands where we have a limited ability to travel between the islands, where traditionally, if you live on, say, Maui, to research the records here on Oahu, you have to take the day off. You have to fly over, you have to rent a car, you have to drive to the archives, and depending on how successful your research is, you either have to spend the night there or you have to fly back and make that return trip all in the same day. Because we do have a massive amount of raw data in, to look through, to find in the marriage, the birth, the death, not only the records, but also the journals, the attending physician records, the land records, the, uh, the oral history genealogy that we've captured. And it's also complicated by the fact that most genealogists and the average researcher has very little understanding of what the record making process was of these institutions and these individuals who have left this, this rich documentary heritage to us today. So, so the question becomes, how do you find that needle in a haystack, that one record that you're looking for that will help unlock that next branch of your family tree? Well, you could use a search button 
But the problem is, is you need to have that information electronically available in order to because if we don't have that indexed information, what happens is your search will not return the results that you are expecting. And it's particularly difficult here in Hawaii because the written word has only been around since the 1820s. And even in the first couple of decades, there was still some negotiation of how to take the Hawaiian language and put it into a written form so that the evolution of individuals' names changed in how that phonetically was spelled out. And even currently, we have gone through yet another revision of how the Hawaiian language is recorded through the use of special characters, such as the okina, uh, a backwards apostrophe, to stress where pauses in, in names are placed. So without accurate indexed information, it's very, very difficult to try and access some of these records of the past, particularly, again, once you get past the standard marriage birth death records. So now what we are focusing on is providing quality results. So that requires a manual intervention with manual data entry. We can't rely upon computer aided interpretation of optical character recognition or intelligent character recognition to be able to interpret this handwriting or these typed words to be able to accurately populate the metadata that we need to try and find these records. So we really need to focus on capturing appropriate metadata that allows you as a researcher to do targeted searches for names, locations, and dates to be able to return results that are relevant to you. And none of this is available as we digitize paper records into an electronic format for Array Online so that you can search from home. So what that really means is that we have to have a lot of people pounding on a lot of keyboards to create this value added service. Which means we need your help in making this process better. And we've had a wonderful relationship with Family Search to really help us do that, to digitize a vast number of records and more importantly is to get them indexed so that they are discoverable. It's one thing to have a million pages of genealogy records available online. It's another thing if you have to search each of those million pages one by one by one, hoping that maybe what you're looking for is there. So what we really need is a better tool, a better tool to capture the information and a better tool to present it to you in your search results so that the best way to find that needle in the haystack for is to use a magnet so that you can find what you are looking for quickly and easily and celebrate that new information that new knowledge that you have discovered so our approach to doing this is to create a new website where we can present vast amounts of information quickly and easily in an intellectual organizational approach that makes it easy to navigate and to browse for things that you may not know we have or you don't know if the record exists. The tool we've come up with is the Digital Archives of Hawaii and it is our new data repository that's more than just a database. It really is an entire preservation system on the back end to allow us to preserve authentic digital records. And the whole technical aspect is a whole different discussion for another day. So let's talk about the front end and what that looks like. Because we're in archives, we took a archival theory approach in how we do knowledge organization. And that really starts with the record group. In this case, the institution or individual under whose auspices the records were created. And here you can see a small 
sampling of what those are. The Department of the Interior, which does land, Department of Taxation, Foreign Office and Executive, Governor's Records, Judiciary Records, Land and Natural Resources, the Legislature, and you can see also not just us, the Hawaii State Archives, but at the bottom we also have the Library of Congress. Because one thing that, that we've really focused on is providing access to these records, regardless of which institution created them. So we're actually hosting multiple other institutions within our repository in order to make discovery easier for our researchers. So when you dive into a record group, what you're presented is a series listing of the different types of records that are produced. And a series is a group of related records that all have the same function or were created for the same reason. And here we have some of the archives finding aids, some of our publications, our reference room microfilm, so you no longer have to come into the research room in order to see these 184 sets of microfilm. Some of our unprocessed collections that we have, but haven't had time to fully process and describe and make accessible to the public. At least this way you have some rudimentary access. Our manuscript collections and then our photographic collections as well. When you dive into one of these series, you can see it really gets to be very, very extensive in the types of records that we're preserving that have genealogical implications, particularly again, as Hawaii as a kingdom was relatively late into the formalization of some of the processes compared to some of the European or continental uh, counterparts. So we didn't here have a real formal process of recording birth, marriage, and death until the mid-1800s. When you get before that, it's a little bit more difficult in where those records are. And because the process of documenting a birth didn't really start picking up until the mid-1800s, you will have individuals with no birth record in Hawaii during that time period. So you have to start looking at other resources for evidence of their life. And in this case, you can see that we have probates, we have wills, we have other types of records in the formation of corporations and tax records and census records where you may be able to find evidence of them and start to make those familial collect, uh, connections. Here are more examples of the types of records that you'll find on the digital archives. In addition to the vital statistics, marriage, birth, death records that most genealogists are used to looking for, we have tax assessment records going back to the 1840s. We have passports, immigration records of individuals coming into or leaving the Hawaiian Islands and voter registration records going back into the beginning of voting rights here in Hawaii. So once you get past that initial marriage, birth, death, there are a lot of other types of records that require more extensive research, but are incredibly rich in the individuals that they document. One of the most exciting things to me about being the administrator of the public archives is the richness of the history and the heritage. And along with that is the language component. Prior to becoming a state, Hawaii originally was the Hawaiian kingdom and had its own rich, complex language. And we are one of the only states in the union that is officially bilingual. English and Hawaiian are the two official languages of our state. And to honor that, we have been using graduate students to help translate some of our access material into Hawaiian language, Alelo Hawaii, so that you can choose what your preferred primary language is and be able to search into our collection in that language. And here's an example of some of that access information that originally was in English that we've now translated to provide multilingual access into. So our current process, when we index now, we scan a series of paper records 
in high fidelity uncompressed images. We do standard textual based records at 400 DPI, 16 bit TIFF uncompressed files. They're very, very large, but that is because we're also first and foremost in archives. We have to be concerned with preservation. We have to make sure that ever, whatever we do today, we can make those records accessible well into the future. We don't wanna be stuck with a Betamax or zip drives that in 10 or 15 years will be a technology that nobody can access. But we also understand that those are very large, difficult to access files over the internet. So what we do is we also create a single multi-page PDF file of all of these high fidelity scans. We load them up into a shared remotely accessible drive, create a standardized spreadsheet template, and then ask each volunteer to take a chunk and their own copy of the spreadsheet and then index all of this information that is required by the template. Once they are completed, we send it to a second volunteer or staff to proof that work, to make sure that they understood accurately, that any areas that they were unclear about have been noted and vetted, and that they were able to actually read the handwriting, which is getting to be a bit of a lost art today. And then as I mentioned earlier, the final step for us is to send these records to one of our Alelo Hawaii graduate students, uh, those who are fluent in the Hawaiian language, so that they can translate it for us so that we can load up both language versions into our website in order to, prefer, to provide that primary language source access. So yeah, yeah that, that takes a lot of manual work. And there are some problems in this process, you know, not the least of which assumes that, you know, all of the volunteers are working at the same pace and in the same space. Uh, because if we have an alphabet breakdown, we really don't want to release that set of records until all 26 letters are done. So if you are working on K, which in the Hawaiian language tends to be one of the most used letters, and you're taking five times as long as everybody else, you get one person holding up all of the rest of the team's work. And that makes it really difficult to have to proof this work because of that uneven time distribution. Furthermore, manually doing this requires flipping between multiple windows, one that has the original record and another that has the actual spreadsheet. And the end product for us then is we're left with a bunch of related but separate files that we now have to bring together. Is it labor intensive? Yes, but it's totally worth it in the end because what we get, the result and the accessibility of it is really unprecedented compared to what we can do in our paper collections. So let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Here is an illustration of what Honolulu looked like in 1853. So predating the introduction of photography here to the islands. So really this is the only visual evidence we have of what life was like. It's an amazing, amazing detailed documented view of 1853. Now if that we've captured some of that metadata that we typed onto this this print, you can see that it actually notates individuals are distinctly drawn and called out on this illustration. And in particular, if you see that it says in the bottom right corner, there's a Mr. Henry C, who was the marshal for the Hawaiian Islands. And if he's one of your relatives, not only do you have evidence of his existence, you actually have some visual representation of what he and his wife looked like and where they lived, this being their residence. So it's an amazing piece that normally most genealogists would not know to look for because it's not a marriage, birth, death, land record, law case. But by indexing all of this information, we've now increased accessibility to some of this really obscure pieces of genealogy that may help complete that picture for you. So that when you look at the indexed information, the value add that our volunteers are adding, you can see 
the immense value from the dates and the descriptions and who gifted it to us and from which collection and who took the photo that we're able to now make accessible on a keyword searchable basis to our researchers. But we're not going to do this alone. We need help. We need the volunteers. And that is something that FamilySearch has really been a value added partner to us in the immense relationship that we have together and the family that we have now found amongst the volunteers that help us out. But we can't do this without you. So know that when you help index, you're doing this not just for yourself, not just for that institution, but for every researcher that comes after them. So please let me say mahalo nui loa. Thank you so very much for all that you have done, for taking time to listen. And if you have any questions about anything that I've covered or what records we have here at the Public Archives or how to help volunteer, please feel free to reach out and contact me. Aloha.